GoPro takes a few minutes. Dominique Serafini, the world-renowned artist of Jacques Cousteau, works on a book for children to educate them on lionfish. Oh, there's the lionfish when they escape from the aquarium in Florida. And after that, right, they come everywhere. And uh, as a story with this uh, reef fish, uh, and the origin of that, they, they have been captured first in uh, Indonesia. They are sold to company who sells that to the aquarium in Florida, and they have been transported from here to Florida, and from Florida, all around the Caribbean. And uh, that's the problem. They are so clever that uh, even when we go very deep, like with the sub at 100 meters, you have a lot of lionfish. Yeah. Okay, that's a little story. Okay. <laughs> Dominique was hired aboard the Calypso in 1981 with the goal to create children's books to inspire them about the sea. The comic book series, known in French as Bande Dessinée, told of the adventures of the Cousteau team. You must have some questions. After all, you are an explorer, aren't you? How did Dominique come to have such a fantastic life? What other amazing things has he done? I mean, you can't possibly think life ended after the Calypso. How do we come to meet Dominique? Welp, pull up your dive bag and let me tell you a story. Like many of you, my diving obsession was sparked by watching one of Jacques Cousteau's epic films on the television series The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. Cousteau was a master storyteller and for his time had more toys than anyone that we had ever seen. He had a submarine that looked like a flying saucer. He saw amazing creatures. His dive team wore space-age dive suits. He had a helicopter. And he traveled to places we could only dream of. I used to know the names of all the crew members of the Calypso and hoped that someday I might meet one of them. In 2009, we got that opportunity. By chance, in 2009, Doreen and I were sitting in the original location for the Bistro de Prix on the island of Bonaire. Bonaire had a postcard which was painted by Jacques Cousteau's artist. I dove the wreck in 1998 and 1999 on air. It was deep, about 200 feet. The ship, called the Miry Bon, and affectionately labeled the Windjammer, was a clipper ship that sank off Bonaire in 1912. She was an amazing ship and a fabulous wreck. I saw a painting on the wall similar to this one of what looked like the stern of the Windjammer wreck. I asked the owner Patrice Renou about the painting and stated that it looks like the same style as the ghost wreck of Bonaire postcard painted by one of Jacques Cousteau's divers. Patrice said, yes, Dominique, He's next door. Do you want to meet him? In total disbelief and a bit of a loss for words, I managed to say yes. He walked outside and in came this person about five foot six tall. I introduced myself and asked if that is the windjammer. He responded by saying in a very French accent, How you know windjammer? I told him that I dove it in 1998 and 1999. After being quizzed on my diving abilities, he asked me, would you like to go diving with me? I did all I could do to not kneel on the floor and start praying to Allah. I said yes. The next day I met Dominic and his son Enzo. We went out to the Oasis, Dominic's Amel cruiser, picked up their gear, and I drove us out to the Lac Kai Inlet. Dominic described an incredible dive, including a tarpon pool. He then mentioned using the strong waves to help push his back in against the strong current going out. 
we eventually reached the entrance to Lac Kai. It has changed a bit since 2009. Here, Doreen and our friend Mike Hudson sit on the park benches that sat on the point. The benches have since been washed away by the sea. Yet the memories of our dive, like today's shoreline, are as vivid as the day we made it. Hey guys, this is Rich. This is the Kai Inlet in Bonaire. It's a beautiful sunny day, uh, just like it was back in 2009 when we came here in April. The difference was we had one to two meter waves and the winds were a lot stronger. So we, uh, we go out, we get in the, into the uh, channel and everything is what, what he said. We went out, we saw the tarpon, we went shooting out over the wall, we went down to 20 meters and uh, it was a beautiful dive. We saw an enormous loggerhead turtle swim by us uh, in the center of the channel. And then uh, at, si at 20 meters, we had six spotted eagle rays swim right between the, the middle of us. But then on the way back, we came up to the center of the channel and Dominic puts his hand on a rock in the center of the channel and he points with a big grin on his face. And it was only then that I realized he had these really long free diving fins, which gave him a lot more power, and I had split fins. I said, this is going to be interesting. So, anyways, he and uh, Enzo, they come up out in front, and it's not long before they leave me behind, and I'm swimming up the center of the channel, and waiting for that big wave to give me a push, and then I dig my hands into the bottom, and it pulls me back, and... Uh, and then I wait for the next wave again, and then I start kicking like crazy. So this went on for 20 meters or so, and I was getting tired. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, this is really stupid. So I said, I'm going to make my way to the side of the of the channel. So I started working my way over to the side, and the and the uh, current gets a little bit lower, and uh, I managed to get up into shallower water, maybe about. Uh, five meters and I poke my head out of the water and I can see these park benches on the side. I said okay so I managed to get my way in, I collapse on the sand, take off my weight belt and I start looking for Dominic and Enzo. And down the shore over here the two of them are laying on the shore, they're also tired and they got their hands over their heads, they're looking out looking for me to see where where I was. And I give them this faint wave and, and said, hey, and they look over and they start breaking out into laughter. And uh, we're, getting it, we're getting our stuff in the car and he says, okay, Rich, you can dive with me again. So it was clear I passed the Calypso test for scuba diving and uh, we've been friends ever since. When you become friends, you realize that the person you thought you knew has had life challenges just like you and they become real people. So much so that you find you had similar reasons for getting into diving. In our case, we both saw a Jacques Cousteau production. Dominique Serafini was born in Paris on May 7, 1946, seven months after the end of World War II. The Nuremberg trials were in full swing in a country working to heal itself from the ravages of war. Parisian families had it very hard. With industry and housing destroyed, Paris needed to be rebuilt. Food was rationed. Dominic used to bring home a roll of bread from school for the family, and that was expected to last them an entire week. Yet people made the best of what they had, worked hard, and had a simple life, seldom venturing far from the block they lived on, and relished in social gatherings. Dominic's family had no refrigerator, and so food was always bought fresh daily from the small store just near their home. With no television or social media, like most Parisians, life experiences were limited to the area one block from his house, which was near Notre Dame, a place of extreme beauty, inspiration, and social interaction. To make ends meet, his parents worked a lot, necessitating Dominique to be more self-reliant. To fill the time and fuel his imagination, he started to learn how to draw, and at a very young age, and in fact, chart his own course in life. School did not interest Dominic, but he had an affinity for drawing and painting. His mother recognized this and later enrolled him in art school. From 1966 to 1968, Dominic Serafini studied painting at the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts in Paris. 
Dominic's talents were quickly recognized and he knew he had a future as an artist. Like many divers, something we see or experience sparks our interest, setting us on a path one might not expect. In 1956, Le Monde du Silence, The Silent World, came out and Dominic rushed to see it. Dominic was 10 at the time. The Silent World was the first underwater color film presented in Paris on the big screen in 1956. The impact on Dominique was so deep, he knew this is what he needed to do. Dominique found out Jacques Cousteau was speaking at the Oceanographic Institute in Paris. Dominique wanted to meet Cousteau and present a vision he had to use his artistic talent with Cousteau's exploration of the sea. Dominique was 16. For most people, just walking through the front door is intimidating with its enormous octopus standing guard over the entrance. He then entered the ornate lecture hall befitting royalty. Every wall was decorated with paintings of men and the sea. At the center stood the greatest underwater explorer of his time. Most people would have turned and ran, but not Dominique. He was on a mission. At the end of the lecture, Dominic snuck into the private salon to propose his idea to create a comic book series for children about the adventures of the Calypso. At the time, another member of the Calypso team said he wanted to do it, and Cousteau told Dominic to keep working at it. Indeed, he must have saw something in Dominic as the two stayed in contact. Over the next 20 years, Dominic's recognition as an illustrator grew. In 1977, Dominique illustrated one of the most read scuba training books in Europe. He also illustrated this famous 1980 spearfishing book. Here he is with Jean Baptiste Escalapez, the world champion, in Peru in 1976. In 1980, Dominique was living in Martinique. He was in the middle of a divorce with almost no money. Like a shining beacon, the Calypso arrived in the harbor. Captain Cousteau had flown in by plane. By chance, Dominique was asked by a friend to be part of the airport greeting party. As he exited the plane, Cousteau saw him at the end of the line and went straight to Dominique. He said he heard Dominique was here, reminded him of that comic book series, and asked him to be an art director for his Aquanaut team. You can see Dominique featured in a number of Cousteau films. In this 1989 film, Borneo, the Ghost of the Sea Turtle, Dominique is seen sketching sea turtle skeletons in a cave where turtles could not find their way out and died on Saipadan Island. A child fans through a number of magazines with Dominique's work. Like an apparition, Dominic glides silently into the cave and begins to draw. In the eyes of a child, Dominic's artwork comes to life and sparks another generation's love for the sea, not fully appreciating the effort made to bring it to him. For a time, art supplants science on Alcyon. From Paris comes illustrator Dominique Serafini, who is working on a Cousteau book. To portray white sharks as accurately as possible, he carries pencil and plastic sketch pad into the sea. The team helps turn ocean to art studio. And Serafini's first model arrives with an unsettling eagerness to pose. It is said a dedicated artist will risk life and limb for his art. Serafini will risk his feet.
in a zone where hunger is pervasive, the roles are reversed. The artist becomes an object of close study by his subject. Future readers may imagine that Serafini's work was copied from photographs by an artist who never left his garret in Paris. Dominique's perseverance and talent got him his dream. Dominique would spend four tours with the Calypso team and his original art was honored by the Louvre. After his tours with the Calypso team, Dominic would sail around the world on the catamaran Blue Mantle. Stopping to draw and paint is the inspiration hit. explorateurs d'autrefois, Cook, Bougainville, La Pérouse. When he bought Blue Manta, it had no engines. That never deterred Dominic, who admittedly was fearless in those early days, and the price was right. Aboard the Blue Manta, Dominic works on another Cousteau book. Here, Captain Cousteau views Dominic's artwork for another Cousteau book. Le commandant étudie avec intérêt le travail de son ennemi. Ça va faire un bel album. Oui. Je suis très content. J'avais déjà vu. Le texte, le texte on l'a vu. Oui, mais il va se mettre dans les bulles. Ouais. À présent, le 14e album de Dominique est terminé. Voilà. In 1997, Dominic left the Grenadine Islands aboard the Blue Manta in search of exciting shipwrecks. Here, with sketch pad in hand, Dominic climbs the mast of the superior producer in Curacao to create another piece of art. He sailed west along the coast of Venezuela, passing Tortuga, Blanquilla, Margarita, and Las Aves. His heading was Bonaire. We had heard of a magical virgin sailing wreck sitting just Dominique off the island. Dominique's motivation was Michael Crichton's book, Travels. And then suddenly my entire field of vision was filled with this flat, rusted metal. I was staring at a vast wall of steel the wreck. I recall when I first came to Bonaire, nobody would talk about this wreck, which the island called the Windjammer. Dominique had a similar challenge finding its location. He asked Captain Don Stewart, the recognized creator of scuba diving on Bonaire and who would be a longtime friend, about where the wreck was. He shouted, it was too deep. Undeterred, he reached out to Bart Snelder. Bart, a young dive instructor at the time, quizzed him on his diving ability and experience and agreed to take him. They are friends to this day. Also around this time, Dominic met his life partner, Kathy Salisbury. Kathy owned a newspaper in Canada and loved diving and underwater photography. They were an instant match. Kathy was considering heading up a newspaper in London, but Dominic convinced her to stay with him. Their life experiences have been those of constant adventure. Together, Kathy and Dominique made this early video of the Windjammer, whose actual name is Mari Bond. At this time, the wreck was truly magical. It lay on its side with an intact mast and crow's nest. You could easily swim within the ship. Dropping down on the wreck, you could see a single crack in the center. It was full of fish. The wreck is deep, and it did claim a dear friend, Maurice Coots, who worked at Princeton. Maurice died of a heart attack while diving it with Dominique. 
Lester Diamond also died on the wreck in 2005. Today you are required to have a technical diving certification to dive it. Dominic made this sketch of the Mari Bond while performing 50 dives on the wreck. This original painting was made from the drawing. We have a copy of it in our Bonaire home as it is made around the time I dove it with Chip Coy in 1998 and 1999. Dominic and Kathy went on multiple diving adventures researching, photographing, and painting many of the beautiful shipwrecks in Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, and Las Aves, and in 2002 published the book Dream Wrecks. In the preface, written by Jean-Michel Cousteau, he mentions the time Dominic's feet were tickled in that shark cage off Australia, with his hands reaching for the surface in apprehension. The same year Dream Rex was published, Barry Clifford published the book The Lost Fleet. It talks about a famous piece of history wherein the French fleet ran their entire armada on Las Aves January 2nd, 1678. Along with the armada, Numerous privateers' ships were also destroyed. Along with the fleet, the French's power in the Caribbean was destroyed. With the help of a lost map drawn by the French fleet captain, Barry and his team located the site of the disaster. These pictures taken by Dominic and Kathy about the same time shows the extent of the wreck. The book was quite an amazing piece of work and it got the attention of John Wesley Chisholm, a producer from Arcadia Entertainment to approach Kathy about making a Canadian television series called Dream Rex. Off the coast of Grand Cayman Island, a dark outline hangs precariously over an undersea cliff. It'll take some high tech tools and precision planning to reach the Dream Rex television to series is frame. meant to be high energy, and we often There's chuckle about the James Bond type music the at the lead in of every Most episode. Rotted away long ago, but not all intact, upright, hauntingly beautiful. These are Dream Rex. Meet photographer Kathy Salisbury. She's made it her life mission to capture the most spectacular wrecks in the world. She's assembled an all-star cast of divers who are ready for anything. Daring descents, undersea mysteries, and unpredictable creatures. They'll stop the drama the in some of the episodes seems a bit exaggerated, the but then you get one like that of the Kerry Lee the off Grand Cayman Island. It is in fact very deep and quite dangerous to, to be diving on air. A lot was risked to bring this to the Canadian audience. At the time of this production, many of the episodes can be seen on Amazon Prime. After Dream Wrecks, Dominic continues to paint and sell his art throughout the world. Dominic always waits for inspiration, and what he produces is quite magical. He made some fabulous paintings like these of the 1902 Mount Pele eruption in St. Pierre, Martinique. He uses special colors such as the yellow to give you a 3D experience with 3D glasses. While in Martinique, he also dove the deep wreck for Arema that sunk along with the rest of the ships in the St. Pierre Harbor when the volcano erupted. St. Pierre was totally destroyed. This 15-minute film shows the underwater wreck Rorema. It was directed by Patrick Sardi and it was made with Dominique and Jacques Ives Imbert. La salle des machines, les chaudières. This is Dominique with Imbert on a safety stop above the Rorama. Sketch pad in hand, of course. Dominique discovered the St. Pierre wreck to Maya about the same time. Dominique performed a 90 meter solo dive to find her on air. He describes the wreck as just like the windjammer. This painting by Dominique shows the Tamaya in the foreground. Behind it is the Rorama, and then behind that, the other wrecks in St. Pierre. This was the last extremely deep dive 
Dominique May. Dominique created this book of the eruption which signaled the end for all the ships in the harbor. Dominique is definitely a creature of habit. This is Dominique with some of the tools of his trade in Canada. He has had the same painter's palette for decades. In fact, when Dominique started painting, his mother made sure he had the best brushes she could find. He has most of the same brushes he had when he was a teenager in Paris. And nothing escapes Dominique's brush. This inflatable rib used to be gray. He even paints his tools. Here, Dominic proudly displays his yellow vice grips. Dominic is also an environmentalist. Here, he poses with a member of the Sea Shepherd. Dominic also made a comic book for Paul Watson about their efforts to protect whales. He also made the book The Orcas, The Spirits of the Sea for Jean-Michel Cousteau, and The Plastic Monster for Expedition 7th Continent in 2016 to make people aware of the growing plastic problem. These are some old photos of Dominic and Kathy that they were kind enough to share with us. Here he is at the helm on the Calypso. Here he is with Albert Falco, the captain of the Calypso. I asked Dominic where they found silver wetsuits. He said, simple, we paint them every day. This is another picture later in life with Falco, Kathy, and Dennis Martin Laval. Calypso Doctor of the Silent World. Dominique made this amazing piece for the Bonaire Mangrove Center. This is Dominique in 3D glasses with his painting of the Bianca Sea at the Grenada National Museum. Dominique continues his work to this day. These are three paintings Dominique is actively working on in Bonaire. Possibly the greatest recognition Dominique has had was when he was honored by the Louvre in Paris. He was asked to exhibit his original artboards from December 13th through the 16th in 2018 at the Carousel du Louvre. He was billed as the well-known divers artist of the Adventures of the Cousteau team. Now you know why. These are images of the original art shown at the Louvre. The detail is incredible. I recently shot this video of Dominic at Bonaire's White Hole. It was a beautiful day on Bonaire's east coast. In our next episode, we will sit down and talk with Dominic and Kathy and learn more about the Aquanaut artist and their beautiful Bonaire home. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.